First of all, uh, happy birthday, and I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, asking me to speak at this great conference. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to speak about motivic mirror symmetry for Higgs bundles, which is joint work with Simon Pepin Lala. So the plan is that I'm going to tell you something about uh, Higgs moduli spaces and stacks, um, and then we're going to talk about mirror symmetry and different versions of mirror symmetry. Um, and then I'm going to get towards uh, motives, and then we'll see how much time we have left for uh, talking about the proof. So um, let's just start straight away. Um, on section one, which is all about uh, Higgs moduli. Um, throughout, I'm going to be working over a curve. So I'm going to let um, C over K um, be a uh, smooth, uh, projective, geometrically connected uh, curve. And I'm going to fix the rank and degree of the Higgs bundles that I'm interested in. So I'm going to uh, fix a rank N and a degree D. And um, I'm only going to be interested in the case where my moduli spaces are smooth. So I'm going to assume that the rank and the degree are co-prime. Okay. Um, so I wanted to draw a diagram of all the moduli spaces that are are going to appear, and some that don't actually. So let me sort of draw a diagram of uh, the moduli spaces slash stacks, which I'm interested in. And so, um, now let me draw this as a big table. So um, firstly, we have the sort of vector bundle versions. And then we can pass to um, their algebraic symplectic versions, so the Higgs bun bundle versions over C. So everything is over C. If I don't say it, it's all, all, all bundles and Higgs bundles are going to be over C. Um, and uh, first we have the uh, moduli stacks. <laughs> so I'm going to write the stack of vector bundles on C uh, to be bun, and then I'm going to put a N and D, but N and D are going to be fixed, so you can kind of forget about that if you'd like. And then sitting inside there, so this is quite a, a big unruly stack, we have um, an open substack of semi-stable <laughs> vector bundles. <coughs> so this is the uh, semi-stable stack. So this is the um, open stratum in the hardener of filtration, and we're only going to be caring about semi-stable things. And then we can go from the stack to um, its um, good or adequate moduli space. And this is the moduli space of semi-stable vector bundles. Or really polystable vector bundles. Because there's some identifications going on in here. Um, well, actually, not in the case that N and D are co-prime. Um, and uh, so actually, in the case where N and D are co-prime, this is just very simple. This, um, this map is just a, a GM gerb because um, when N and D are co-prime, uh, this implies that actually semi-stability and stability coincide. So I, I'm not going to say too much about stability, so I'm not even going to define what it is to be stable. It's just a, a condition on slopes that you check for all stub bundles. But um, this in particular means that um, if we look at uh, any uh, stable, any object in here, any stable vector bundle, then its automorphism group is just scalar. So we just get this GM job. OK, and then you can take the cotangent bundle of this, and that's sort of uh, Oh, and so it, as well, I should say it's a, because we're assuming that N and D are co-prime. This is a smooth um, projective variety. Actually, everything on this line is smooth. So uh, also this this stack is smooth, um, and uh, we can complete this. Uh, sorry, sorry. Well, yeah, maybe I want to view this as sitting over this. We can complete this to um, a um, slightly larger moduli space, which is the uh, moduli space of Higgs bundles, which is um, still smooth, but no longer projective, only quasi-projective. Uh, 
And again, um, this can be realized as the good or adequate moduli space of some semi-stable locus in the stack of all Higgs bundles. Okay. Which you can think of the cotangent bundle of this, this stack. And again, so this is... Um, Still a GM job. Um, oh, actually, let me, I want to create a little bit of space here. Sorry. So although this, this moduli space is not um, quasi-projective, it at least cohomologically and also motivically behaves, uh, sorry, although it's not compact, it behaves as if it is. So there's a GM action on here, uh, which is first considered by Hitchin, uh, which just um, scales the Higgs field. Let me just, um, so if you like, if we've got a Higgs pair, which uh, is a Higgs bundle, um, so uh, a vector bundle with a Higgs field. Um, so this is called the Higgs field, this theta. Um, then we just um, multiply theta by um, our scalar, and this gives us a GM action. And um, you can always do the downward flow of this GM action. Um, and then this deformation retracts onto the fixed locus, which is actually smooth and projective. So that's one sort of interesting feature for studying the Higgs moduli space. And the other is the uh, Hitchin map. Which is a map which um, is essentially telling you um, what the characteristic polynomial of this twisted endomorphism of E is. So it's a map to some affine space. Which is telling you about the um, well, the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of E, which are then going to be sections of um, powers of omega C. Um, and the nice, so um, we're actually not going to see the Hitchin map that much in this talk, but it's somehow hidden in the background in all the stuff that I'm not going to say today. Um, but one of the nice things about this Hitchin map is that its generic fibers are um, abelian varieties. In fact, uh, Jacobians. For, for not C, but some uh, associated curve, uh, a spectral curve. OK, so that's the, the, those are the moduli spaces that are appearing. Um, and I should also say that uh, since we're going to be talking about um, other groups than just GLN, I'm going to now mention the, the more general picture. So in general, Um, so, for um, a reductive group G, we have a uh, modulized basis of G Higgs bundles. On C. Um, and these also have their own Hitchin maps to some affine space as well. Uh, so the only actual groups that I'm going to care about in this talk, other than GLN, is the um, groups SLN and PGLN. So let me explain what these are in the case where, so I'm not going to tell you what a G Higgs bundle is. I'm only going to tell you what an SLN uh, Higgs bundle is. So let's just explain this in the SLN case. So um, for vector bundles, an SL n bundle is, is just a vector bundle with trivial determinant. Now, once we impose trivial determinant, that means that we're going to be looking at um, degree zero things, and then the moduli space is no longer smooth. So we don't want to allow this. So instead, I'm going to um, define SLN Higgs, mod uh, Higgs moduli spaces uh, as a sort of twisted version of this. So take any line bundle uh, of degree uh, d, uh, and then we can consider um, the moduli space uh, ML, M, um, which sits inside uh, M, M, and D. Oh, maybe I should have switched these the other way around. Yeah, that, one, that looks nicer. Um, and this is the um, moduli space where the determinant of E is uh, isomorphic to L, and uh, the Higgs field is trace-free. Okay. 
So this is going to be what we we'll call our SL moduli space. Um, and then we have our Hitchin map here. Um, and we can um, take the image uh, of this under here, and then I'm going to call this my Hitchin base AL. It actually doesn't depend on L, but I'm just going to use that to distinguish it from this, this one here. Okay, and let me just call this ML as well. So this is my SL Higgs moduli space. which is, again, smooth uh, by this assumption that N and D are co-prime, which is exactly why I wanted to do this uh, strange um, version of ethyl and Higgs bundles. That's okay. um, and uh, the other one that we're going to need is um, PGL and Higgs bundles. Oh, and let me maybe call this HL as well. So again, really, a, a PGLN bundle is a PGLN torso, but instead we're going to just think of PGLN as being a quotient either of um, GLN or of SLN, and we're going to realize the moduli spaces as quotients of either uh, this or this. So let me uh, write it like this. Um, so if I take the SL moduli space, yeah, and I quotient out by, so there's a, there's a natural action um, by tensoring by line bundles. And if I take the um, N torsion in the uh, Jacobian, then it acts on this. And I'm going to want to take the, um, the, the stack quotient here. So I want to make sure that this is still smooth. So um, I'm, I'm really thinking this is an orbifold or a delete map of stack. But I can also think again of. Um, PGL is a quotient of GL rather than the quotient of SL. And then um, this is also um, this quotiented by now the uh, cotangent bundle um, to Jaxi, which you can think of this really, um, yeah, how do I want to say it? You can think of this as being a, 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 a torso over this for, for, for this. Okay. Um, yes. So that's the PGLN Higgs moduli spaces. And uh, I should say there's another impo important feature that comes with these, which is that, so the SL one's dependent on this L, but as you can see from here, it, it doesn't depend on the L here. So in fact, we also need to record something else, which it, is that it comes with a gerb. So it also comes with a mu n gerb, which I'm going to call um, delta L to indicate that it comes from the um, choice of L that we made. And what is this? Well, it just comes from the fact that um, uh, if we look at the moduli stack associated to the SLL, SLN Higgs moduli space for L, then um, we have, it's just a mu n gerb over this moduli space, and then you just descend it to get a uh, mu n gerb here. Okay. So let me um, now talk about mirror symmetry. So Higgs bundles. And I'm going to focus the story, because that's all, uh, all I'm interested in for today, on SLN and PGLN, which are Langmans dual groups. But there's a much more general story for um, other groups. So the, the first thing to notice is if, is if you have Langlands dual groups, then the Hitchin bases uh, are actually isomorphic. So um, if we look at MSL, which was just this MNL, uh, then it's got its Hitchin base. Oh, and I didn't write a Hitchin map for, for the Higgs one. Well, I, I'll write it now. So this has um, this Hitchin map HL. And then on the PGLN side, we also have a Hitchin map. Let's call it H bar which goes to uh, APGL, let's say. Uh, and these two are isomorphic, so they have the same Hitchin base. And in fact, um, Hausel and Thaddeus showed that um, the, the generic fibers of these Hitchin maps are torsors under um, dual abelian varieties. And so this sort of um, then led to various forms of mirror symmetry um, relating uh, different invariants for, for 
these, these two moduli spaces of SL and PGL Higgs bundles. So perhaps, um, one of the nicest ways to think about this is that there's an expected derived uh, equivalence. So um, the generic fibers of these, um, these vibrations are, are dual abelian varieties. And then you have the Mukai derived equivalence um, on these fibers. And the idea is that this should extend to a derived equivalence um, or between coherent sheaves on the SL moduli space and um, well, twisted coherent sheaves, so this gerb has to feature. So twisted coherent sheaves on the PGL moduli space. Um, and this is um, at least established over, so this should be really relative to the Hitchin base as well. And this is established over an open in the, uh, in the Hitchin base, so by uh, Donaghy and Pantev. Uh, true over the regular locus. in the Hitchin base. And uh, also, uh, if you take the self-dual group, uh, so the, the general linear group, then Arinkin actually shows this is true over the elliptic locus. Um, but I want to formulate instead, rather than a derived equivalence, I want to talk about uh, topological, cohomological, or motivic uh, versions. So um, let me state the topological formulation. Due to, which was um, conjectured by uh, Housel and Fidesz, and then uh, proved, so I'm going to state it in a second, um, by uh, Gropenik, Wies and Ziegler, with, uh, which gave an equality of um, Hodge numbers. And then later there was a proof which actually um, upgraded this to an equality, so Hodge numbers relating these moduli space, so I'm going to say precisely what it is in a second. There was a, a later proof uh, which was really on the level of Hodge structures um, due to Malik and Shen. Okay, so um, what is this result? Well, it says that if you look at the um, cohomology of the SL Higgs moduli space, yeah, okay, let me, let me again write it as uh, ML, um, then uh, it's isomorphic to the orbifold cohomology of the PGL moduli space where it's now twisted by this gerb. This is the SL side here. And on the PGL side, we have to do some sort of correction term here. Okay. And let me call this uh, star. Okay, so um, I, let me explain what the right-hand side is, first of all. So this orbifold um, cohomology twisted by this gerb uh, delta is uh, defined as follows. Well, you have to remember that this, um, as an orbifold, if you remember this was the SL moduli space, quotiented out by uh, the action of a finite group, so where gamma is the n torsion points in the Jacobian of C. Um, and so uh, this is actually a sum over elements in gamma. I'm going to write a bunch of things and then explain what all of them are afterwards. Mm, now there's a two. So I, I take the cohomology of some locus which is going to be depending on the point, uh, the element gamma and gamma, and then there's going to be some shift um, and also a shift here. So I take twist, and then there's also going to be, I'm going to take some um, 
uh, piece with respect to some character. So let me explain what all of this notation is. So where, so firstly, m gamma is the gamma fixed locus inside the SL moduli space. It is the gamma fixed locus, which also inherits a um, action of gamma, big gamma, um, and. Uh, uh, what next? Oh yes, then let's see what this character is. Well, under the Weber pairing, we can identify uh, gamma with its characters. And I'm just going to let the um, corresponding character for um, gamma be kappa gamma. And then, um, so as I said, there's an action of uh, gamma on the cohomology, well, actually on the moduli space and then also on the cohomology, and so it's de going to decompose into different characters for gamma, and we're just going to take the piece um, corresponding to the character kappa gamma, okay? And then the third thing is, and let me write it here so I have a bit more space, what is the shift? Um, D gamma is just some co-dimension. Um, uh, and what is this? Well, M gamma was sitting inside the SLN uh, Higgs moduli space. And then we've got the Hitchin map for this. And I just um, define A gamma to be the image of this. So it's very important. The gamma is not acting here. So I'm just defining this to be the image of M gamma under here. Uh, and then this sits inside here. And um, D gamma is the co-dimension here. Uh, exactly. Is, is this orbital so would you put the uh, HP of this right hand side of the Hadek Um so, so I don't think so exactly because well so so this well so this derived equivalence, right? I mean it should come from the Mukai derived equivalence and, and that doesn't preserve the cohomological grading. So like uh, yeah, up, up, up this, uh, yeah, yeah. Well so well the shifts are really I, I think the way to think of the shifts is that you wouldn't do the shifts if you were just looking at orbifold cohomology. I mean it's because you have this gerb. Uh -huh. So the shifts are really encoding the gerb to some extent. And also the fact that you take this kappa well the, this kappa gamma piece is also associated to the, the gerby part. So this kappa I think yeah, okay anyway. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, um, and so, um, actually, this isomorphism, this star, um, is constructed as a sum over all little gamma and big gamma uh, of isomorphisms. of isomorphisms, uh, which let's call them star gamma, where, so on, on the left-hand side, we've got the SL moduli space. And as I said, on its cohomology, we have gamma acting. And so we can take also the um, different pieces with respect to the, the characters. So um, I just dropped the, the coefficients here. It's uh, C, C for the moment. Um, And then on the, the right-hand side, we just take the, 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 the piece that we had here. Okay. So it's uh, constructed by um, summing over these isomorphisms uh, piece by piece. Um, so I, what, we're, what we're going to try and do is um, motivically lift this. So let me just say a, a, a few things about the second proof, because this is really the one that we're going to, to use. So. Uh, what do Malik and Shen do? Well, actually, they um, they actually construct this isomorphism uh, relative to the Hitchin base. So they they actually really work um, uh, in a framework of um, constructible sheaves uh, over the Hitchin base, uh, and they also use the theory of perverse sheaves, 
and the decomposition theorem and support theorems and so on. And this is not available motivically. Um, and actually, to make the topology of the Hitchin map simpler, this is already understood by work of Van Gogh, uh, what you should really do is rather than considering uh, classical Higgs bundles, you should work with detwisted Higgs bundles, so they, um, which is where you, you replace your um, line bundle by OD for some divisor D. So, sorry, sorry, your canonical bundle, which uh, appeared in the definition of the Higgs field. So, work with detwisted. Higgs bundles, so that the topology of the Hitchin map is simpler. Um, and then, um, essentially, they prove something involving detwisted Higgs bundles, and they go back to classical Higgs bundles using vanishing cycles. So, which takes you from detwisted de to classical Higgs bundles. And so the, the, the goal of what we set out to do with Simon was to somehow prove a motivic refinement of this because a, a lot of this looks very geometric, apart from perhaps this problematic step. Um, so and uh, what do I mean by this? Well, um, I, I, I mean in, um, uh, in the category uh, Uh, introduced by Vygotsky of uh, a DM uh, of uh, motive sheaves over K with uh, Q coefficients. Well, not quite Q coefficients. I need to add. Yeah. Okay. Well, let, let, let's just put Q coefficients for now, and we'll we'll modify it. Um, and the point is that this this. Um, so, as, so Carlos said yesterday that the theory of motors is still quite nebulous, but this is somehow a more practical way of dealing with it because um, this has many desirable features. So it's a, um, it's a triangulated tensor category, and it encodes things like uh, algebraic cycles. So you can realize child groups as home groups inside here for um, a smooth, uh, variety over K. And it also encodes uh, various cohomology theories, so via its realization functions. Uh, so various realizations. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in part three of the talk, but let me um, just state the, the main theorem. Um, so assume, oh, and actually I should have said, uh, uh, when I started talking about this uh, mirror symmetry stuff, so everything in section two was really uh, thought about over the complex numbers, um, but actually we managed to extend this to an algebraically closed field over um, of arbitrary characteristics, so I'll explain that a little bit at the end. So assume um, K uh, is algebraically closed, so I'll, I'll explain why we need this assumption and um, n is invertible in K. And we're still going to assume that uh, n and d are co-prime, which was sort of the running assumption. Then um, let, so we actually need to slightly extend Q by adding a primitive nth root of unity. Then um, once we work in um, motors with coefficients in uh, this uh, in in lambda, we have a sorry, man, yeah, let's say it like this in d m k lambda, there is an isomorphism um, which looks very much like the one here that we had on the level of cohomology from the uh, motif of the S L. Uh, Higgs moduli space and the orbifold motif, again twisted by this gerb of the PGL one. 
Okay. And so you can define this in exactly the same way as we define this one, just replacing cohomology each time with um, motives. Okay. So I should, yeah, let me say, I want to say a few things. So firstly, we, we assume that um, the field is algebraically closed. This is, in some sense, actually, this holds even if the field is not algebraically closed, you just have to pass to some finite extension so that various roots exist. Um, uh, and um, when, uh, when the characteristic of k is zero, then this is going to um, uh, basically be a motivic lift of the Malik uh, Shen proof. Okay, so uh, oh, let me just quickly mention, uh, I guess as a corollary of this, you also get a, um, a version of mirror symmetry for uh, Chow groups. So, as promised, I'm going to say something a little bit more concrete about motives. So, um, what is this category DM? So I'm just going to work with Q coefficient this um, uh, throughout, or, or maybe adding this primitive nth root of unity. So DMKQ is a uh, tensor um, triangulated category of uh, motives over K with Q coefficients. So it's only a triangulated category, it's not a derived category. Um, conjecturally, there should be a t motivic T structure on this, which realizes the, the heart inside there being the uh, category of mixed motives over K. But uh, that's kind of the part of the, the, of the picture that's missing. But let me explain what we do have concretely. So with a functor going from varieties over K, so this can actually be extended to uh, even stacks, Um, which associates to a variety its motive uh, with the following properties. So firstly, what does the tensor uh, structure here correspond to here? Well, it corresponds to the uh, Cartesian product of varieties. So we have uh, Kunith isomorphisms And so um, the unit uh, for this tensor product then is the um, motive of spec K itself. Um, and uh, built into the construction, you have A1 homotopy invariance. Oh, I should really say that um, so there are different kinds of functions, just like there are different kinds of cohomology. So this is really, I'm thinking about a homological motive here. You can also think about a cohomological motive. So this is covariant for me, this functor. And you can also think about uh, motors with compact supports uh, and so on. But uh, we're just going to be thinking about this homological one. So um, A1 homotopy invariance says if I've got a vector bundle uh, on X, then the uh, motive of E is uh, isomorphic to the motive of X. Um, and then also we can projectivize this and get a projective bundle formula. So if I now take the projectivization of E, then the motive of this is the motive of the base tends to the motive of the fiber. And the fiber is just um, a projective space. Let's say this has rank N. Okay. And, oh, that's, that's the maximum. Okay. Um, and so this, 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 this motive here is very uh, concrete. It decomposes as a sum of uh, pure Tate twists. Up to n minus one. So I package the two twists together into one. So this is a pure Tate twist. This is a sum of pure Tate twists. Um, let me give a few other properties of this category DM. So uh, also I should say built into the construction you have um, a tal descent. And then also um, you have uh, 
for a, for a smooth closed pair, you have guys in distinguished triangles. So if I've got um, Z, a closed subvariety inside X of uh, co-dimension C, let's say, and both are smooth. Then you can describe the motive of X in terms of the uh, motive of Z and the complement, but it's not the sum of these. Instead, you have a distinguished triangle, which might not be split, um, where here you have the open piece, and then um, you have to take a Tate twist. Um, so these are one of these motives appearing in the, um, in the decomposition of projective spaces. Uh, and you get this distinguished triangle. Um, yeah, let me say a few other things. Well, you can also realize child groups, and then you also have various realization functors. And the one that we care about is going to be the Betty realization. Um, so let's say that K is some subfield of C. Then um, we have a Betty realization. Yeah. So the the Betty cohomology uh, or Betty homology factors um, via um, via M basically this, this motives functor, um, and so we get this Betty realization, which tells us about from, from the motive it tells us the Betty cohomology. Um, and yeah, I should say other things. So there are also um, relative motives. Um, and you have a six operation formalism, so you can really work also relatively. Um, but yeah, maybe in the interest of time, I want to move on to talking about the proof as much as possible. So let me start on talking about the proof. Oh, and I, I should say as well, so there were some stacks lurking around, and this actually all extends to stacks and derived stacks by work of Adil Khan. Um, so again, the isomorphism that we get here is constructed as a sum of isomorphisms over all gamma and gamma, just like in the cohomological versions. So um, our isomorphism is a sum of isomorphisms Um, from so now the, the, these two shifts that we had are packaged in, into one shift, this Tate shift here. Um, so this is on the PGL side. So this is the the sum of these is the um, orbifold motive or the twisted orbifold motive of the PGL moduli space. Um, and then we get to the um, SL one. So overall, little gamma in gamma, uh, which let me just remind you what gamma was. And uh, so let me explain the strategy. Oh, you can't, can you do two boards at once or no? No, okay.
So the strategy that we use actually uh, uh, applies to more general um, sort of lifting of cohomological statements to motivic statements. So let me uh, explain it. And there's basically three steps. But this strategy can be employed more generally. So first, what we do is we just lift everything that Malik and Chen did to uh, get a motivic morphism. So we lift the construction of um, Malik and Shen to a morphism in DM. Um, so I get a morphism. So again, one for each uh, gamma and gamma, going between the things which I want to be isomorphic. But I don't know that this is an isomorphism. And this actually involves some work, because it involves um, basically going through everything they did, so vanishing cycles and, and, and things like this in a motivic framework. Um, but you can do this. Um, and the key point about this is that the Betty realization of this is the isomorphism of Malik Shen, because of the way we've constructed it and everything is compatible with the realization. So such that this is the isomorphism of Malik and Shen. Um, And we want to show this as an isomorphism. So how can we do that? Well, then the idea is firstly to prove it in characteristic zero, because their result was only about characteristic zero anyway. Um, so we're going to prove, um, oh, sorry, yeah. I, I guess this, this, this last statement should already be in characteristic zero as well, right? And we're going to prove um, that alpha gamma is an isomorphism. by employing a conservativity argument and this is in some sense that where the most work goes into the proof because um, we, we use a theorem of Wildershaus um, which says that the best you realization um, on uh, is conservative provided you work with abelian motifs so let me it like this. So for a subfield of C, um, yeah, the Betty realization uh, is conservative on abelian motifs. Um, and do I want to call this DM? No, I, I didn't have any notation. Okay. Where, so what is this? This is the um, big subcategory generated by motifs of abelian varieties, or equivalently, actually, motifs of smooth projective curves. And so, um, in particular, if we knew that all the motifs were involved were abelian, then we'd already be done because we know that this is an isomorphism, and so then we would know that this is an isomorphism. So then the main sort of thing that we have to prove is that the motifs involved are abelian, and we do this. Um, so, and, and really the key thing is actually to show that the motive of the SL. Um, moduli spaces abelian because all of these are somehow direct factors of that and it's closed under direct factors. So the motif of um, the SL Higgs moduli space is abelian. And this actually works um, just assuming, so again, you need to assume that N and D are co prime. And you don't need to assume that, C is that K is algebraically closed. You just need to assume that you have a rational point on your curve. Okay. And this is kind of the, the, the main step. And then, consequently, we know that 
Um, the Betty realization of alpha gamma is an isomorphism. And so we conclude that alpha gamma is an isomorphism. Um, and then the, the third part of the strategy is then to go from characteristic zero to positive characteristic. Um, uh, um, and we do this um, using a family of curves over a DVR, so a, a mixed DVR. Uh, well, yeah. So, where? So, yeah. Let me let me um, say a few words about this, and and uh, using uh, motivic nearby cycles. So, what do we do? So, we've got this um, curve C over um, a field K of positive characteristic. Then um, we can lift this to a, um, a curve over a DVR R. So uh, here, the so R is a DVR whose, um, whose special fiber is uh, the original field that we're interested in and whose generic fiber is characteristic zero. Such that, and, um, And then, well, here we know that the result is true. So we know that we have these isomorphisms. And then the idea is that we want to relate them using um, this motivic nearby cycles. So using the um, uniformizing parameter, we get the map from um, the generic fiber, so, so motives over the generic fiber to motives over the uh, special fiber. And then the idea is basically to show that uh, our isomorphism here gets sent to an isomorphism here. Okay. Um, so as I said, this strategy can just be employed more generally. Uh, and so we, we can also do that. So let me um, state another result that can be proved using exactly the same strategy. And then I'll hopefully say a little bit about uh, this theorem here. So let's um, just give one example of what you could do. So you could also prove um, a uh, motivic chi independence result. Which now we're back to um, uh, GL uh, bundles. And so uh, the general linear group is self-dual, but over the same Hitchin base, you can look at different degrees. So you can look at D and D prime, where D and D prime are both uh, co-prime to M. So assume, uh, again, K is algebraically closed, and um, D and D prime are co-prime to N. Then um, then there's an isomorphism between the uh, motifs of the GLN Higgs moduli space for degree D and degree D prime. Uh, and this is actually with Q coefficients. And, and uh, essentially, it's the same st strategy. Um, so let me now um, say a few words about uh, this theorem here. Oh, no.
So actually, in, in um, a few years ago, we just for fun showed that the motor of the Higgs moduli space uh, for GL was generated by the motor of the curve. But uh, this turns out to not be true for um, when you replace GL by SL. Um, and so it actually ended up being a little bit more work proving that the motor of the SL Higgs moduli space is abelian. So let me um, so the, let me let me explain some more about the motors being abelian. So let's. Uh, so this is um, now we can work more generally under the assumption just that um, C again has a. Uh, rational point. And again, I'm always going to be assuming I'm in this co-prime setting, so everything is smooth. Then um, we have two statements. Um, so firstly, a few years ago, Simon and I, sorry, sorry. Simon and I proved that um, uh, the motif of the um, GLN Higgs moduli space is uh, generated by the motor of the curve. So, and actually there are many moduli spaces um, which turn out to be uh, generated by the motor of the curve. Um, so for example, the moduli space of, uh, well, even the moduli stack, so I think the big diagram has gone now, but the moduli stack of um, bundles uh, on C is also generated by this motor. We had a concrete formula for that, and this is more of a, a statement that it lies in a category generated by this motor. Um, but then it, it was, it's a little bit more tricky for SL, so this is now the SL Higgs moduli space, is, um, so it, again, you can actually see, it, you can prove something a little bit more concrete than it's just abelian, so maybe I can say it like this. It's contained in the category generated by um, motors of curves, but not necessarily just this curve, so you have to add certain um, atal covers, so let me write it like, Yeah, like this. These are, well, certain finite atal covers. But in particular, this is contained then in this DM abelian, and so it's abelian, which is what we needed to apply the conservativity argument. Are these the No, 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 not at all. No, no, no. No. Uh, these, you should see them as like, uh, you want to take a root of some line bundle at some point, and so you need to pull back to do this. I mean, this is kind of, I mean, actually, this was already apparent in Hitchens work, like already when he looked in rank two at the cohomology, he saw that um, this on the level of cohomology somehow. Um, yeah, so let me say that, yeah, so the important thing is that in general, this is not contained in the category generated by M of C. So we proved that together with uh, Li Fu, actually. But this is kind of strange, because this is really something that's different about Higgs bundles to vector bundles, because um, in the vector bundle case, you have that the motif of NL, uh, so, so firstly, the moduli space of vector bundles of rank N and degree D is contained inside here, and the same for the um, SL one. Oh, sorry, this is curly N now. This also lies inside here. Okay. Oh, and actually, so as, as well, because of the, the way that the Malik and Shem proof works, we have to do this actually for all D-twisted Higgs bundles. That doesn't create any extra hassle, really. It's just um, slightly uh, notationally cumbersome. Um, let me talk about the proof of the first one, maybe, because uh, I have three minutes. Three. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Um, so let's, let's say proof of, of one, or however much I can say about the proof of one in three minutes. Um, so the, the, the idea is that first um, we use this, so and I should say this is um, based on really the geometric ideas in some work of 
um, Garcia Prada, um, Heinlott and Schmidt, who compute the class in the growth degree ring of varieties of the Higgs moduli space. Um, so what we first do, well, we use um, the scaling action that I mentioned right at the beginning of the talk in the hope that I would get to revisit this. So we have this scaling action on the Higgs moduli space, and it sort of induces this deformation retract onto the fixed locus. And what do um, uh, fixed things look like? Well, um, if you've got some Higgs bundle and it's fixed, then the GM action induces a uh, weight space de decomposition, and the Higgs field has it increases the weight by one with respect to this. You get sort of like a, a chain, if you can imagine. So this is actually a disjoint union of chain moduli spaces, um, where again, there's some notion of stability. So actually for chains, there's different notions of stability, but there's some sort of Higgs notion of stability. And then you have to, you've got various different um, invariants occurring. So this is like the, all the ranks, all the degrees. And you've got some finite set here. And so it suffices to understand uh, that these motives are generated by C. And then to do that, the next step is really using this, um, this work here, which is a wall crossing argument for chains. So you understand how variation of stability for chains works. And essentially they have this um, cone where they understand, so cone of stability parameters where they understand what's going on very well. And uh, the, the Higgs one really lies on the boundary of this. So you just sort of move it in slightly, and you've got this wall and, wall and chamber picture. And then you just move to some chamber at infinity where you understand what's going on. And then from this, you see it suffices to actually understand um, that um, the motif of, well, actually, a stack of injective chains, where, so now M is constant. Is generated by the motive of C, um, and then step three is really actually producing an explicit formula for this, which builds on work where we've actually computed an explicit formula for the stack of all vector bundles. So yeah, let me just move this up. So three. Oh, no. And you can see that everything is in terms of the motor of C or symmetric powers, things that are generated by C, uh, Jacobians of C. Uh, so. Oh, now this is, yeah. Okay, um, and I should stop there, thanks.